Right, time to do some animation. First of all, um, what we want to do is unlock your ball layer if it is locked, and I'm going to drag it up to the top. Next thing, let's lock that path layer because we don't want to be messing around with it by mistake. Okay, from having a quick glance at the path layer, we know how many frames we're going to need. Now, yours could be different to mine. I need 41 frames. So, I'm going to make sure I've got the ball layer selected. Move along the timeline to frame 41, which is there. Right click and insert a keyframe. And the first thing you notice is that the path disappears. And we want to bring that back. So in the timeline on the path layer, I'm going to just insert a frame there as well. Brilliant. OK, next thing we're going to do is we're going to start adding in some keyframes. And we know from our path where they're going to be. So one is going to be on frame 7, which is there. So what we do is we go to frame 7, right click, and we go insert keyframe, and then we move ahead to frame 16. And if you want to go a bit quicker, what you can actually do is just press F6, F6, top E keyboard, um, just above the actual numbers. Um, then frame 21, and so when you're doing this with F6, it's an awful lot quicker, as you can imagine. Uh, there we go, that's 29, 33... It's there, 38 over here, and 41 there. Brilliant. Now what we need to do is we've added a keyframes. So we need to actually move the ball into the correct position. So using the selection tool, which is here, which we should probably already have selected. If we haven't, just appear a little black arrow. Move over to your first keyframe, little black dots. And I'm going to click on the, the ball and then move it there. And you can actually use your arrow keys to help position it as well if you want. Right, click on the next keyframe, do the same thing, move it into position, move it there. Next one, move it down to there. So you get the idea, you should do at least. It's not too difficult, I don't think. Uh, move that one down there. And let's just get the next one sorted. There we go. My computer's been a little bit laggy. So if it freezes or it's a bit slower than yours, don't worry. That's just my computer being rubbish. Brilliant. Right. If I click on this little red player bar and drag it back, you'll see that we've got our ball flicking from one position to another. That is not animation. To make the animation, we need to add in some in-betweens or tweens. That's the, another name for them, the shorthand name. And in-betweens go between these keyframes, the black dots keyframes. All we do to add them is we right click in the gap in between and we go um, create classic tween. So um, there we go. Easy to do. Whoops. Don't do what I just did and click on the wrong thing. It's create classic tween. There we go. There. Yeah. So we add lots of them in, and it should sort this out. I can actually see it moving for the first time, probably. Right. There we go. And you can drag it forward. Now we've got a bit of a problem, and the problem is this, as my ball falls, it doesn't follow the path. It ain't the end of the world though, what I can do is, I'm just going to left click, so I move my player bar to so around about in the middle of there, and I'm going to drag that up to there, let's just check. Ah, oh, spot on. So if you need to move anything, you can do that. Right, so we've got a bit of animation. The next thing we want to do is we want to add a little bit of the squashing and stretching. Uh, because at the moment, the ball drops and it's falling like a pool ball. There's no bounce on it. And having things bouncing and stretching is very important. So to do that, let's move to our first kind of squash position, which is here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add actually I'm going to add a keyframe before with F6 and after. And I'm going to do that on every frame where it's hitting the floor to squash. So I'm going to move ahead to 21 next. So F6 and add keyframe before and after and on frame 33, one before and one after. Trust me on this one, it makes sense. I'm not just making stuff up to make this slightly longer than it has to be. Okay, so 
the ball falls there. So we're going to go to frame seven on my one. Could be different on yours. I click on the free transform tool. I click on my little ball, squash it down, and drag it out a bit. We don't want the ball to gain lots of uh, volume. It's still the same ball, it's just squashed. There you go, and then I'm going to move it down to the line. Spot on. Now what you'll see is, because this is a rubber ball, and this is why I put the keyframe straight after, as soon as it bounces, it reforms its shape, like that. So there we go. Right, let's move ahead to here, and we're going to need to squash that. Now, how much are we going to squash it? It's not going to squash as much as the first one did. Um, so to help us, we're going to use onion skinning. And onion skinning is by clicking this icon down here. What it does is, it adds in this grey area here, which you can make bigger or smaller. We're clicking on the little white dots and dragging them, left-clicking and dragging. And that shows us all of the frames. So we actually see the squashing one there. So if I click on frame 21, I can actually see how much the frame 7 squashed. So it's quite handy for me. And then I'm going to move it down. I use my arrow keys to move it down. There we go. So it doesn't squash as much. Let's click ahead to this next one. Uh, click on it. And let me just drag that. I can see all of them. There we go. And this one, we don't want it to, to squash quite so much again. Get those arrow keys in. It needs to... Spot on. There we go. Let's just turn the onion skin off. So just click on that. On and off, very easy to do. And what you can see is now we have our ball bouncing. It's worked quite well. Right, now we're going to add the stretching in. And the, the stretching was actually why we added the keyframe before. So we had the keyframe after so that the ball bounced and reformed back into its original shape after which gave it that feeling of springiness. Now the one before we suppose we're going to stretch it. So we're going to click on this one and let's stretch it long and make it thinner. And then moving my cursor up to just outside the top corner so it changes, you see how it changes. Left click, drag that like that and move it down. And I'm moving it down so it's just touching the floor. Animators have found that when you're doing squash and stretch, if you have the frame just before it squashes, just touching the space where it squashes, it just improves the animation, looks better. So that goes boing like that. There we go, spot on. It gives a bit of a spring to it. Right, we need to do the next one. So, and again, because it's not falling as fast, it doesn't need to stretch quite so much. There we go. And onto the last one, where there's only going to be a tiny little bit of stretch. There we go, and then move in a little bit, fraction, move that across. Right, let's check that out. Right, we can play that by pressing Control and the Enter key, or the Return key. Um, the Return key, or Enter key, um, is just below the Backspace key. So, finger on Control, press the Enter key, that pops up, and then we're going to actually see the ball that is not too bad. Okay, the only ways to improve that now would be to add a shadow in and to get rid of the path layer. So let's uh, keep the path for now. Let's add in a shadow. And to add a shadow in, we're going to begin by locking the ball layer because we don't want to accidentally mess that up. Then we're going to go down here, if you remember from before, add in a new layer, drag that underneath the ball, and I'm going to just rename that shadow. Brilliant stuff. Now I'm going to go over here to my um, circle, my oval tool, sorry, click on that. Go down to my fill tool, and I've already chosen it, a light grey colour, and I'm going to draw myself a shadow. There we go. It's got a black line around it. We know how to get rid of that from the selection tool. Click on, on that and delete it. Okay, we're ready to go apart from, we just need to select the shadow, turn it into a symbol, so remember, this is actually going to be animated. It's going to be moving underneath. I'm going to call that Shadow. So movie clip, registration is fine. Click OK. And we're ready to go. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to move ahead to there. And I'm going to press F6 to add myself a keyframe in. And I'm going to drag that over there. Then I'm going to move to frame 15. Press F6. 
and I'm going to drag that underneath it. Then I'm going to move ahead to frame 20. You're probably getting the idea now. Press F6, add in the keyframe, fix position in time. Let's use the arrow keys to get it there. There we go. Move ahead to there. And what we'll end up with is the shadow following the ball. Move that under there, get it straight. Move that that way. Press F6. Whoops. What you've noticed as well is that um, for actually for the last few frames I've forgotten to press F6, um, which is a problem. But you see now that what happens is that it goes from there to there, and then uh, because I've not uh, put a keyframe in, it's actually animated it, it skipping over there where I've just moved it to. So you see, even me who uses this all the time can still make mistakes. You've got to keep adding those keyframes in. Otherwise, it'll go horribly wrong, just like it did then. So let's put that right then. It's always when you're filming it that things go wrong. I was doing this just for myself. I have no problems. Right, F6. But it also means that um, if I can mess it up, you can mess it up. So uh, don't get stressed if any of this goes wrong for you. There's always a solution. And it's normally not too difficult. Right, let's check that out. Right, follows it. Now all we need to do is, like before, when we did the ball, create classic tween, create classic tween, and then it will, the compute will fit all the in-betweens in, and the shadow will follow it. Pretty nifty. Okay, let me just... Uh, There we go. Now the only way we can improve this even more is if we, as the ball hits the floor, um, we make the ball, I mean make the shadow, sorry, what we're talking about, make the shadow a bit bigger. And it will give us the, uh, and we can even make the shadow smaller at the beginning. It's going to give the illusion of the ball being higher so that the, uh, the shadow is smaller. And as the ball comes to the earth, it's bigger and as it bounces up, it gets smaller, it gets down there. Let's make it a little bit bigger, not too much. Up there, keep it about the same. Uh, I'm not happy with that. Um, Happy with that uh, shadow at the end there. Let's just move it there. Put us a keyframe in and move it to there. It's important to keep checking your animations. That didn't look right to me. That certainly doesn't look right. Um, let's click that. Yeah, check these things and then move them where they're going. Right, let's have a look at that now. Okay, let's get rid of that path layer, and then we can play it and see what it looks like. So let's delete that layer. Okay, and let's play it. And that's not too bad. The, uh, the, uh, the shadow uh, moves around a bit at the end. I think that was because uh, when I first added the shadow layer, I didn't insert a keyframe, I just inserted a frame. So there's probably some stuff being messed up there. Don't worry about that if it's happened to yours though, you can easily just go in and, and move it where it needs to be and you can actually remove keyframes um, quite easily by going to clear keyframe and that will sort out some of those problems for you if you want. I'll let you sort that out for yourself though. Um, right, that's just done for now. Let me see, uh, let me know how you got on with it.